Namaskar. This is Dadaranjit Ananda. Welcome to this webinar on Ashtanga Yoga. The webinar is a, this is a live webinar and you can ask questions. The questions you, if you see in your control panel, there will be a space for questions. So you can type your questions. You can type it during the presentation or you can do it in the end when we will have time for questions and answers. Uh, let's go through the presentation then. So Astanga Yoga is also called the eight limbs of yoga or the eight steps of yoga or the eightfold yoga. And uh, who is this for? Who is Astanga Yoga for? It is for everyone. So you just need to be a human being. There is no other requisite. You don't have to be a doctor or a very learned person. Anybody can practice Astanga Yoga. It is uh, for everyone. If it is for the human being, then let's think a little bit about us. We have a body. This body maintains our existence. We exist because we have this body. But it is not everything. We have also a mind. And uh, our mind is always thinking. And apparently, our mind is kind of the controller of the body, like the body is the vehicle and the mind is the driver. So this mind is always thinking. And we may have deeper parts of ourselves, which uh, we'll maybe mention later on. But one of the main things in human life is thinking. We think before we do anything. And it's our thought that makes us do things. So we are always thinking. So regarding thinking, my teacher said once the following quote. Regarding this faculty of thinking, if it is done in a methodical way, the result is certainly positive. A negative result is achieved only in certain rare cases. But if it's not done in a methodical way, the general result is negative. Only in very rare cases do we get a positive result. Shri Shri Ananda Murti. Why did I bring up this quote here? Astanga Yoga is a method or it's a system. It's a system to attain yoga. So that is Astanga Yoga. The important thing here is to have a very precise, a very methodical system so that we can attain good results. And most of our existence is in the mind, is in the thought. So in Astanga Yoga, there is a lot about thought. That is also about body. And we will see as we pre I present the various steps. So what are we going to practice? So, so who is going to practice? The human being, any human being, any age any type of body, any social status, any education. What we are going to practice, we are going to practice Ashtanga Yoga. Now, the word Ashtanga, Ashta means eight. Anga means limbs or parts. So Ashtanga Yoga, the yoga of the eight steps or the eight parts. 
So this system, having these eight parts, which is not that we have to first practice one, then the other, then the other, they are kind of simultaneous. But by practicing all of them, we will be developing ourselves in a more complete way. Now, why, why do we want to practice yoga? What do we get by practicing yoga? We, we are practicing yoga to get something. We usually do something in our life because we want to attain something. We want to usually get something good. We human beings want to get something good in our life. We want a good life. We want to be happy. We want to be in, in uh, living well, let's say. So everything we do is with that scope. And um, so let, let's see what are the steps that we can take. It means the steps of Astanga Yoga to have a good life, to have a good human life. And uh, as we go on, we will also touch a little bit what is really the scope of human life. Okay, so the first thing we should do or we can do to have a good life is to have a good relationship with others. If we don't have a good relationship with others, then it is um, very difficult to, to have a good life. If we are in conflict with others, then our life will always be um, disturbed, our existence will be disturbed, our thoughts will be occupied with that situation. So this is essential. Now to get a good relationship with others, sometimes it doesn't happen automatically. So we need to practice, to practice something that will eventually create this good relationship with others. So here comes the first step of this Astanga Yoga. There are five practices and they are called Yama. So they are here, let's say there were eight steps. Now the first step is Yama and this step is divided in five. And uh, I'm not going to cover these five. I'm going to leave it for a course. You know, I'm planning a full course on Astanga Yoga. So during the course, we can see each and every part. But here, I want to give you a, a general idea of these steps. So the first step is this one, to have a good relationship with others. And uh, I will give one example. One practice is non-harming not to harm anybody, not to have the intention to harm anybody, because every action starts in the mind, then it gets expressed in the physical world. So here I'm relating to some other individual, some other being outside me. So me and a second being, we are two here, minimum. Uh, so I can practice jama. The moment, there is more than one being involved in the action, then I can practice Yama. So in this case, I'm going to practice non-harming. It means I, it starts from my thought that I will not harm anybody. So I'm now relating with this being. So I will have no intention of harming this being. Now you may ask me that, 
what about if this being is going to attack me? So shouldn't I defend myself? Yes, you should defend yourself. But when you defend yourself, your intention is not harming the other being. Maybe you end up harming in the process. It may happen, but that's not your intention. So this non-harming has to be practical. I don't want, I don't have any intention to harm anyone. But at the same time, I should uh, protect justice. I should protect myself. I should protect um, other beings. And uh, so in that process, it might happen that somebody gets harmed, but that's not my intention at all. So I have to start from that idea that it's not my intention to harm anyone. Okay, so that that uh, is the starting thought, and that has to be in my mind. And if that's in my mind, then I will be able to implement it. So that is one of the points for a good relationship with others, and there are four more. Now, what is the good thing about this system of Yama is that if you know that there are these five points, in case you have a bad relationship with somebody, then you look at these five points and make an effort to apply them in that relationship and see if it solves the problem. Okay, that was the first one. Now, the second step or the second limb, the second part, is to have a good relationship with myself. If I don't have a good relationship with myself, then also things will not work. You know, if I'm unhappy with myself, I cannot lead a good life. What to say, practice yoga. And for this good relationship with myself, there are also five points, five practices. They are called Niyama. So this is the second step. And uh, here also, I'm going to give you only one example. And this example is about cleanliness. Clean the body, clean the environment, clean the mind. So this is very important. And uh, my body, I can keep it clean externally and also internally. Internally means everything that goes within my body should be, let's say, clean. My environment should be clean, my external body clean. And my mind, my mind should be clean, let's say, uh, externally, means everything that's coming into my mind, I should make an effort that I only allow things that are going to have a good effect in my mind, and I keep out what's going to have a bad effect. And uh, the, how to say, the mind also has to be kept like clean inside. It means things that are already within my mind, I should uh, make an effort to purify. Okay, so these details we'll see during the course. So that is now it's the second point to keep a good relationship with ourselves. Now, um, let's go ahead. If I have a good relationship with myself and I have a good relationship with others, the effect or the result will be that my conscious mind, means the conscious part of my mind, will be balanced. It means that part of the mind that is dealing with the environment uh, outside me, with the people, that most external layer of my mind will be balanced. So this is the effect. So as I present these eight steps of yoga, I'm going to 
be mentioning also which part of the mind gets balanced by that particular practice. Because the idea of this Ashtanga Yoga is that there will be practices that will balance each and every layer of the human existence. So now let's see conscious mind. The conscious mind is balanced by Jama and Niyama, the step number one and number two. I also need to have a healthy body. Without a healthy body, I can't uh, practice yoga. I can't have a good existence. If I, if I have pains, aches and sickness, it will be very difficult for me to maintain a good existence. So I need to work to keep my body in a balanced way. For that, there are the exercise of yoga. And in fact, in, uh, in the present time, this physical yoga is very popular. Even some people think that that's yoga, but that's only one of the limbs, one of the parts of yoga to do the exercises. And uh, these exercises are called asana, or it's a posture that by holding that posture for a certain time, it will give some comfort to your body. Means if I stay in that physical position for a certain number of seconds or minutes, it will help my body to work better, to function better. Therefore, it will make my existence much better. So that is asana. It's the third limb or the third step of yoga. Okay, now one very important thing of our life is breathing. I can live without food, I can live without water for a long period of time but I cannot live without air. So air is really, really, really important in life. And to breathe well is very important. It can change our life. And for that, there are techniques, systems of breathing that will help. Suppose some techniques will help to balance certain parts of the body, cure some diseases, but essentially it keeps the vital energy flowing in the body. So these techniques are called pranayama and they are the fourth limb or the fourth step of yoga. Now, the asanas work a lot on the physical body so the physical body is the most external part of our existence. The more internal is the conscious mind. The conscious mind is helped with jama and yama. And then it comes the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is helped by these uh, breathing techniques. <coughs> so the this pranayama is a very important part of the system of Stanga Yoga. So now we have reached the step number four. So as you see, these four steps can be practiced simultaneously. You will be doing the yoga exercises at the same time that you are practicing non-harming, at the same time that you are practicing cleanliness, and at the same time that you are practicing pranayama. So all, all of them are happening simultaneously. Now, let me ask you a question. And uh, this question will, uh, let's say,
Uh, okay, Let, maybe I will leave the question for later. Let me see, it's not coming up here. Yeah. It's not coming up here, so let, let me leave this question for later. Let me continue with the presentations. Okay, now uh, we are doing all this to have a good life, to have a happy life, but uh, one detail, we cannot get this happiness from the outside world, from the things we have, from the things we do, because most of this happiness is inside us, is within us. And um, just see the situation, for example, two people went to a celebration festival and these two people are there in the festival. One is very happy enjoying the festival. The other one is very sad, not enjoying. So what's the difference? Outside, everything is the same. The festival, the people, what's happening outside is the same for both. But the, what's happening inside is different from one to the other. So the happiness or the enjoyment is actually inside. It's not outside. And the object that is um, giving us enjoyment is actually also inside. Because yeah, like we have one object outside, a festival. It should be happy for everyone because it's a happy thing. But one person is happy, one is not. Okay, so the difference lies within. So the real happiness is coming from inside, not from outside. So with that in mind, we need to learn to go inside ourselves. And that's the step number five, to practice, to withdraw the mind from the external world and to bring it in. So this uh, practice is called Pratyahara. There are a number of techniques, which is not the scope of this first presentation, but we'll deal with them during the course. And uh, so these um, techniques of withdrawal, this Pratyahara, it helps to balance the supramental layer of the mind. So now we have physical body, conscious mind, subconscious mind, but doesn't end there. There is deeper layers of the mind. In this case, we called it supramental layer of the mind, the supramental mind. So now these techniques or this practice of Astanga Yoga is helping deeper, means working deeper in our mind with this step number five. It doesn't end here. It, it, uh, it continues. We, we are still in number five. And even our mind doesn't end in the supramental. It has more layers. All right, now we bring the mind within, but when we bring the mind within, it's still kind of scattered. So we need to concentrate it. Without concentration, we can't achieve much in our life, neither within, neither in the outside world. In our job, in our general life, if we don't have concentration, we can't achieve much. The same inside. If we go inside and we cannot concentrate, we can't achieve much. So concentration is the next step. Some people, sometimes they say, oh, Dada, I cannot concentrate. Well, concentrate is the result of practice. 
If we don't practice, we don't, we can't concentrate. If we practice, then we slowly, slowly attain the capacity to concentrate. Just think about your physical body. Suppose uh, you say, you will tell, oh, I, I cannot lift uh, 10 pounds, it's, it's too much. Yeah, but suppose you start practicing. You start with a few pounds and then you do exercises every day and then you increase, your muscles will get stronger. And after some time, this 10 pounds will be nothing. So in the same way it happens with the mind. The mind also needs exercise so that it increases it cap its capacity. The body needs exercise so that it increases its capacity. So that's the same. Body, mind, both need training, practice to improve. So in this case, what's the practice? Concentration. So there are special practices. They are called dharana. So doing these practices of dharana, one will attain concentration, will get concentration. It will not come like this, but it will gradually come. These uh, exercises of concentration, dharana, they help to develop a deeper layer of the mind. You know, we were talking about physical body, let's say one, uh, conscious mind, two, subconscious, three, supramental, four, and now we come to five, and we call this one the special knowledge mind, or the, the level of the mind with a special knowledge. It's a deeper knowledge, uh, intuitional knowledge. We'll, we'll not cover it in this presentation. We'll leave it for uh, when we have more time, okay? So we have reached now the point number six, dharana. Now what's next? We have, we, we are doing concentration. Then we need to meditate. Many people think meditate and meditation and concentration is the same, but there is a subtle difference. Meditation is thinking with concentration, means you get, you have concentration and now you are thinking and you are thinking a special thought. Okay, in meditation we use, for example, mantras. What are mantras? Mantras are special thoughts. So we are thinking with concentration on a special thought, and that is meditation. And this meditation is the step number seven. It's also called in Sanskrit dhyan. So we now have reached to step number seven. What, what is the effect of this practice in the mind? It develops it brings balance to a more subtle, subtler, deeper level of the mind called the causal mind. It means it's like the cause of the mind, the beginning of the mind, the base of the mind. And, and if we can develop that level, it, the mind will attain much more balance, serenity, tranquility, calmness, or all, all of that, which will allow us to live a better life. You know, if mind is disturbed, you can have money, everything, but still there will not be a good life. So in this case here, if there is balance, harmony, we can get a good life. Even if there is a storm, in the external world, inside there is tranquility, and life is good. So now let's say our mind is well balanced, we are practicing these seven steps. You may ask where to practice. 
you don't need a special place. You can practice here, means where you are. You don't have to go somewhere. You can practice at home daily because this regularity is important. So you should have accessibility to a place that you can be every day. And, and of course, people say, oh, I register for a yoga class. I go there two times a week. That's good. That's, you, are, you can consider that an extra. You are going there maybe to learn, to have a social environment. But the real practice is the daily practice that you are doing where you are in your home, or if you are traveling, you are staying in a hotel with a friend, you can still carry on your practice so that you do it in a very regular way. Okay. All right. So let's continue. I, I'm also covering the why, who, where, when. So when? When, when to, to practice? In your daily life, in small things, small activities. You know, yoga is in everything you do. I like to say that yogis do the same thing as everyone else. We all do the same thing, but we just do it a little bit more systematic, a little bit more methodical. We don't just do it. So let's say a moment in your life, you just woke up in the morning, but you woke up in a bad mood. It's Monday, you are, oh no, terrible, this is Monday. Means that moment of the, the day that your mind just got conscious, the thought that you have at that moment is very important. So we were talking about thinking in the beginning of the presentation. We have to think in a methodical way, then we'll get a good result. So now you just woke up in the morning. So think in a methodical way about something that's very positive, that's very, um, creates a good feeling in you, that uh, brings out your potential. So that first thought is very important. So everybody wakes up in the morning, everybody has a thought when they wake up in the morning. In the same way we also have, but we will work with our Ashtanga Yoga techniques, or even simpler than that, we will entertain only a very positive thought in our mind at that moment. So as you see, to start the practice of yoga is not something out of this world. It is something connected to your daily life. It has to be something very practical. So that is when, when to practice in your daily life, where, where you live, where you are. Now, how, how to practice, study, learn, and then apply. You know, I just a quote here from a famous Brazilian soccer player, Pele. He said, success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you are doing or learning to do. So we have to develop this love for the practice, that we, we like the practice, we get, we enjoy this practice and we get benefits from it. We don't make it heavy on us. I have to practice. Oh, I didn't practice. No. Oh, I practiced a little bit, one minute today, and it gave me a tremendous joy. It helped me a lot. Oh, I practiced five minutes. Oh, now I'm practicing every day regularly. So what? Whatever you learn, you learn a little bit, practice that. You learn a little bit more, 
add to your practice, then you learn a little bit more, add more. Some people want to learn a lot and they don't practice. That's not helpful. It is more helpful if you know a little bit and you practice a little bit instead of knowing a lot and not practicing. So now you may be asking, so what is the eighth step? We talk about seven. We develop the mind, all the levels of the mind, the body. So what's, what's next? Next comes Samadhi. Samadhi is, let's say, the goal of yoga. is a state where you go into a very deep feeling of happiness. An infinite happiness inundates our being. It's a state that you cannot describe with words. And it's not just a feeling of happiness. It's something deeper which I cannot tell so much about it to you because it needs that you experience. But that's the goal of yoga. We can say infinite bliss means something that has no limits, but still these are only words. As we are practicing this system, this idea of samadhi or the experience of samadhi maybe something theoretical. You may have read about it in books of yoga and things like that, but it's theory. But what happens is that with practice, it gradually becomes practical. Let's say that I am here in this room and there is fire outside, okay? So if I go towards the fire, as I move towards the fire, it is becoming warmer and warmer and warmer. So in the same way, as I'm practicing this system of Astanga Yoga and I'm moving towards Samadhi, I'm slowly having some experiences within me that are slowly growing and that reassure me that I'm moving. But this may happen sometimes and then goes away, then again, then again, like that. So this is the eighth step, Samadhi. Okay, so now I have presented these eight steps. Let me do a summary. So this was the eightfold yoga or the eight limbs of yoga, eight parts of yoga. The first one we talked about was to have a good relationship with others. Then next, have a good relationship with me. Okay, my conscious mind is getting okay, but I need a healthy body. So I need to practice the asanas. I need also to breathe well, so I need to practice the pranayama, number four. I need to go within me to find the reason, the happiness, the reason for my existence. I do that with part five, withdrawal of the mind, pratyahara. I withdraw the mind and now I need to concentrate it. So I practice dharana, I practice concentration. I'm now concentrating, but I need to make my mind move towards the goal. That's meditation. Mind moves toward the goal with concentration. So it's thinking with concentration, some special thought, the thought that takes me to the goal that's meditation, number seven. And finally, number eight is samadhi. Now we have here the eight steps or the astanga yoga. And finally, I see some questions. 
So this is the moment uh, you can write your questions and I can uh, make effort to reply. Okay, the first question is here. How long one needs to spend doing Ashtanga Yoga? Well, as I mentioned, that is not a how long. You start. Start with a little bit, and then you can go on increasing as you see the benefits, as you see that it helps you, as you need, as you find time. Okay, so it's not uh, you don't need to think now, oh, I need this one hour, two hours, half an hour, 15 minutes. Learn something. Like today, I talked about the first thought. So the first thought that you have in your life every day when you wake up should be something positive. So start with that. Then, uh, as we proceed with the course, or if you are practicing yoga already, continue practicing and uh, see to study more, to learn more, to apply more gradually. Okay. Okay, another question. How long will it take to feel the benefits? Of course, everybody wants everything very quickly. And it can be quick, but it can take time also because the mind doesn't change like that. It's just, as I mentioned before, same like the body. The body needs practice and then it develops gradually. The mind also needs practice, then it develops gradually. So just uh, be, um, let's say, be mindful that you may feel the benefits quickly or it can take a long time, okay? Okay, so, okay, I don't see any questions here at the moment. All right, so le let me introduce one more thing here. I would like first to thank you for giving your time attending this webinar. And uh, if you didn't attend live for listening to the recording, and I'm also inviting you to a full online course on Astanga Yoga. You can register soon because there are limited spaces available. I'm going to uh, send all the people who registered for this webinar, who attended the webinar or not, I'm going to send a link and you can decide to to attend this course. The course will be on the same time, same day, and um, basically it will cover all the month of February, all the month of March. The thing is, if you miss some of the classes, it's not a problem because you have one week to watch the video. Every class is recorded, you can watch the video, so some classes you can watch live and some classes you can see the video. All right, so that's it for today. And uh, if you still have questions, you can send me or I'm going to put the, this video also on Facebook. You can also ask questions there or you can mail, email me questions. I don't guarantee to answer them quickly, but usually either I answer them through another program or I reply. Okay, that's it for now. And uh, thank you very much. Namaskar.